All right, so first video, how-to video on this channel. In this one, we are talking all about security defaults and baseline security policies. So if you listen to our podcast, you may have heard an episode where we discuss the recent announcements around the retirement of baseline conditional access policies getting replaced with security defaults. In this video, I'm gonna actually walk you through, here's all the baseline conditional access policies that existed pre-February 28, 2020. And here is how to go create the identical conditional access policies in your environment. So if you wanna continue using conditional access policies instead of security defaults, you are prepared for that change on February 28, 2020. If you're watching this after February 28, 2020, and maybe you have security defaults on, wanna turn it off and know what conditional access policies you should put in place uh, when you turn security defaults off, this will show you, again, those conditional access policies that you should get in place to essentially replace what security defaults does that will meet all the requirements for things like being in the partner center and having delegated access to tenants or just those recommended security policies. So let's dive into the video. I'll walk you through all of it. Check out the links in the video description that have links to that podcast episode that have links to some of the documentation around what we're doing here. If you do like this, you want to see more of these, like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully we'll have more of these types of videos uh, coming along shortly. The first thing we need to do is navigate over to Conditional Act. So let's dive into our Azure Active Directory and from Azure Active Directory down to our security. And within security, we have uh, conditional access. So you'll see in my environment, because I'm recording this before baseline policies have been expired, I still have my baseline policies in here. I have my four, the MFA for admins, block legacy, require MFA for service management, and end user protection. I also have a couple of SharePoint ones here for uh, blocking access on unmanaged devices, browser restrictions, and then I do have an exchange Outlook mobile only. These three will be fine because these are not the baseline security policies that we mentioned that are gonna be expired. It really is these four that need to be recreated if you don't plan to turn on security defaults. Again, in my tenant, I'm not gonna turn on security defaults because Frankly, I need more control over my conditional access than security defaults are going to allow me to do. So in the next couple weeks here before conditional access policies get removed and security defaults is the new process, we're gonna create them. If this is post security default and you want to know, can I turn off security defaults? If I do, what conditional access policies should I create? This will walk through creating these four policies if you no longer have access to see what they were. Uh, I'll also link a document down below that you can go uh, click on the link, put in your email address, and the document of all of this policy configuration will be emailed to you so you can have it documented there. So the first of our baseline policies that we wanna create is require MFA for admins only. So let's click on new policy and this is going to be require MFA for admins. Next, we have our users and groups. This is going to be our select users and groups and directory roles. The minimum that Microsoft recommends is what we'll do here. Obviously, you can apply this to a lot more if you want to. But Microsoft's recommendation is your billing administrator, your conditional access administrator, your exchange administrator, you have your global administrator, your help desk administrator, uh, there's a password administrator, security administrator, uh, SharePoint administrator, and our user administrator. So those are Microsoft's recommended nine. This is gonna be required again if you're doing, uh, if you're a partner and you need MFA on for admins, this is kind of that bare minimum that you wanna apply it to. So we'll click done there, cloud apps or security, this is gonna be all of our cloud apps. So we're requiring MFA for those admins in all of our cloud applications. Uh, once we're done there, we can go down to our access controls. So we're not going to do anything with conditions for this one. And we do want to grant access, 
but we are going to require multi-factor authentication for all of these users. So we'll select that one. It does give us don't lock yourself out. Yes, we understand that at this point in time, we're just requiring MFA. I would probably recommend having MFA enabled, having MFA set up. If you do want to exclude a user to make sure you're not going to lock yourself out, you can always uh, exclude yourself, go test this out with some others. Again, set an exclusion up here so you know you have an account you can go back in with. Once you're done, we're going to turn this on. I understand my account will be impacted by this policy. Proceed anyway because, frankly, this policy is already set up through the baseline policy. I can go ahead and create it. And now I have my require MFA for admins. At this point in time, I can actually go in, select this one to do not use this policy as this one isn't going to take effect anymore and I'm just going to be using my require MFA for admins. Next one we have is block legacy authentication. This one, again, is on. We're going to go recreate this one so that when those baseline policies go away, we're all set. Uh, this one we said is block legacy authentication. And again, this is just blocking some of those older devices that may use like IMAP, POP3, and really using the more secure modern auth that's part of Office 365 now. Once we have that named, we're going to go in as well. And this one is also going to apply to all users. So instead of doing the directory roles for this one, we want all users to have to use modern auth. Again, we could exclude users if you have some extenuating circumstances where you need a user excluded, you could do that. Again, recommendation, put this to all users. Uh, get them all using apps that use modern authentication. Cloud apps, this is another one we're gonna to apply to all of our cloud apps. We don't want any of those excluded uh, conditions. This is where we need to go in now to our client apps because those client apps are what's gonna be using that old legacy authentication. We wanna force them all to modern. This one we are going to configure. So once we get here, we're gonna uncheck browser. We don't care about the browser in this stand, in this case. And we are only going to check other clients. So Exchange Active Sync and Modern Authentication clients, we're going to allow. So this policy, the way it's configured, actually says go in and block these other things, not just allow Modern Auth. So once we have other clients selected, we can click on Done here. And we are done with this one. And now Access Controls here, we are going to block Access. So this is one where, yep, we're good. It's gonna give us the same warning. Again, make sure that under your conditions and your client apps, you don't have the browser selected. If you have selected to include the browser and block it, you're not gonna be able to get back in through the browser and you could have all kinds of problems. We're gonna go ahead and turn this one on as well. Uh, again, I don't have any exclusions in mind. Probably not a bad idea to go put an initial exclusion in while you're testing this out, especially if you haven't had these in place before. Uh, I'm going to understand it. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. So once you go ahead and click create, now we have our require MFA. We have our block legacy authentication. So require MFA for admins. We had already turned up. So block legacy authentication, we can go ahead and turn this one off since we have the baseline policy to replace that one. The next one we're gonna do is require MFA for service management. If you are looking for the documentation of Microsoft's website, this is actually also called require MFA for Azure management as this one is setting conditional access for requiring it for the Azure portal, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI. For this one, again, we'll do a new policy, and this one is going to be for uh, require MFA for Azure management. And our assignments here are gonna be all of our users. Again, any user, no matter who they are, if they're signing into the Azure portal, Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, we want this to apply to them. So once we have all users, we can go ahead and click on done here. This is going to be where we actually specify a cloud app or action. 
So instead of none or all cloud apps, we're actually going to do a selected app. This will show all of your applications in your tenant. This doesn't necessarily have to be just Office 365 apps. This can be other applications that are integrated into your environment for, again, third-party OAuth authentication. In this case, we are just going to look for the Microsoft Azure Management Service. This is a single service that includes all three of those things we mentioned before, the Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell, and Azure CLI. So this is only going to apply to our Azure Management. We can go ahead and click through Done there to include that app. And then this is going to be just like requiring MFA when we set it up for our service admins, where we are going to go under our access controls grant and just simply click that we're going to require MFA for this one. Go ahead and turn that policy on. I understand that my account will be impacted by this one because it's impacting all users and go ahead and create. So now we have our require MFA for admins our block legacy authentication, and our require MFA for Azure management. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the service management one now that we have that one created. And then the final baseline policy is this baseline policy for our end user protection. So end user protection policy is essentially just going in and we'll click on it so you can see the description is protecting users by requiring multi-factor authentication if there's a risky sign in attempt. So Microsoft will make an attempt to determine if it's a risky sign in and then go ahead and automatically require MFA uh, in this case. So let's go back here and do a new policy. And this is our... Uh, end user protection policy. So once again, this one's gonna go in, it is going to apply to all of our users because we want this regardless of who they are, if it detects it's a risky sign-in, we want that picked up and MFA required. Cloud apps or actions, again, this is gonna be for all cloud applications. So we'll select all cloud apps, save that one. Conditions here, this is where you have your sign-in risk up here. So we're gonna do sign-in risk, uh, configure. And this is, when will this policy apply? In this case, we're just going to do a high sign in risk. Uh, frankly, I don't actually know if the medium or if the baseline policy is high and medium. This can always come in and be adjusted later. So we'll do the high policy. Device platforms, we're not going to configure any of this. This is all fine. Click done. And this is now saying in the condition that any of my users are signing into any cloud apps and their risk condition is labeled as high, we're going to grant access, but we are going to require MFA. So if this at all looks risky, if it looks like it's from leaked credentials, or if it's one of those impossible sign-in situations where you sign in in two different locations in the world within a few minutes of each other, it looks suspicious, so let's just go ahead and require MFA and not use any of those saved credentials or cached credentials. Put some extra protection there. So we can go ahead and select that. Again, it's going to tell us don't lock yourself out. Yes, we understand all that, and we can go ahead and click Create. Now that that's been created, we have our end user protection. We can go into our baseline policy up here and turn that off. So now we have one of these policies down here, require MFA, block legacy auth, require MFA, and end user protection for all of these baseline policies that are going away or will have already gone away come the end of February 2020. So if you're post February 2020 and you want to use conditional access instead of security defaults, this will meet your requirements for partners, for partner center, for those different scenarios when Microsoft actually requires certain levels of MFA or security to be in place. Um, and this gives you a little bit more control over being able to exclude certain user accounts if you do need to do that. If you do want to still have that break glass account, since security defaults don't account for that, uh, go through this, follow this, check out the links in the video description if you want links to where Microsoft walks through how to create all of these as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps. We'll see you on the next video.